Hello friends. From the solitude in my isolation pod, it has occurred to me that Memorial Day 2020 may have special poignance. The front page of yesterday's New York Times, filled by a thousand names of the 100,000 Americans now dead from COVID-19, softens our capacity for empathy and deepens our awareness of our fragile situation. Memorial Day has roots in the aftermath of the Civil War, which claimed 750,000 lives, requiring the establishment of the country's first national cemeteries. Records show that one of the earliest Memorial Day commemorations was organized by a group of freed slaves in Charleston, South Carolina, less than a month after the Confederacy surrendered in 1865. But the holiday did not win the congressional stamp of approval until 1971, as the Vietnam War raged on. By then, the accumulating memories of loss from World Wars I and II and the Korean War, commingling with the crisis of Vietnam, made the establishment of Memorial Day as a federal holiday a foregone conclusion. And since that time, we've now endured our longest continuous war in the Middle East, with women and men continuing to serve our nation, ostensibly for the sake of the integrity of our national sovereignty. On a day like this, it does not matter whether I have felt a war was just or not. For the fact is, this day does not commemorate war, but those who have died. And today that feels quite important to acknowledge especially as we consider others who serve us heroically fighting a different sort of war. In New York City, the frontline responders have been recognized each night at 7 p.m. We must not forget the others who have served and died in foreign lands. Their deaths make real the importance of our decisions as citizens, who we elect for public office, how we understand our role as a nation in a shrinking world of increasing mutual interdependence. But more, it's important to recognize that our nation's sons and daughters have died on our behalf, whether we have been conscious of this or not. May God bless and hold them all tenderly. Given the paucity of heroic public character within our political class today, it struck me that we could benefit from reminding ourselves of what actual leadership can sound like in the midst of a national crisis. A word of hope in the midst of great loss. A word to encourage us for the upbuilding of the common good. I bet it's been a while since you've heard the words of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Indulge my need to share it with you in honor of all who have served and died, thinking that, like me, you might find it a cold glass of water quenching a very deep thirst. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who have given their lives that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated there to the unfinished work which 
they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Make this a good day, friends. Thanks for listening.